Good morning scholars, welcome back to the channel. This morning we're going to look at number theory at the grade 5 level. In other words, we're looking at types of numbers that we're going to be exposed to as we do mathematics. So we need to know, you know, mathematics is about numbers, shapes, measurements, and so on. So we have to know what are the different types of numbers. So I'm going to read the definitions and explain as I go along what each, what each kind of number is. So we're starting with the natural numbers, otherwise called counting numbers. So natural or counting numbers start at 1 and continue to positive infinity. What do we mean by positive infinity? Now in mathematics, infinity is a concept. It just means that numbers go on and on and on. You cannot come to a point where you say this is the last number. It keeps, you're able to keep adding, adding, adding for the end, till the end of your life and whoever starts counting after you, will, will the same fate will meet them. They will never get to the point where they can stop counting and say this is the last number. So infinity is a concept, it's not an actual value because it keeps, it, it goes on and on and on, there's no end to it. And at this level, you would not be working with negative numbers, but as you go further in mathematics, you'll understand we also have negative infinity. So just as the positive numbers go on and on and on, whether they're whole numbers, fractions, decimals, they go on and on and on to positive infinity, so too we have negative numbers that go in the opposite direction, get smaller, 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 to negative infinity, all right? So that's a concept you can bear in mind as you go further up in mathematics, you're going to be working with negative numbers as well. For now, you're dealing only with positive values and they go on to infinity. So whenever we start counting, if you have a group of items that you need to count, what number do you start counting at? One. So you assign each item to a number and you keep going until you, you, you've reached the end of those items and then you declare how many. So natural numbers or counting numbers start at 1 and it goes on and on and on. So you can stop counting a group of things because they are finite but the numbers themselves, the possibility is infinite. The whole numbers are the set of natural numbers plus zero. So all the natural numbers are also whole numbers, right? But zero is not a natural number. So all the natural numbers are whole numbers, but not all whole numbers are natural numbers. Zero makes the difference. So we include the zero and the others. And these ellipses, these dots at the end, tell us that the list goes on and on and on. So whenever you see a list of things, and these three dots at the end, that indicates that you are not at the end of that list. We're just giving you some examples, but the list continues. So that's what, that's what it means. Common fractions express a part of one whole and are between zero and one. So we have mixed numbers that add, uh, that combine whole numbers with the fraction, but the actual fraction itself, the common fraction, expresses a part of a whole. So fractions, common fractions are less than one. Less than one. So all these are less than 1. So in other words, we're saying, for example, 1 eighth, we're saying if we had something and we cut it up into 8 parts, we cut up that one thing into 8 smaller equal parts, and we take one part out of it, or we isolate one part, or highlight one part. That's what we mean by 1 eighth. 
three quarters is one whole thing we're talking about that we cut up into four equal parts and we're highlighting three of those parts, right? So fractions are part of a whole. When we, make, when we express the mixed number, the whole number in front just tells you that you have completed that many holes. And then there's, a, there's still a fractional part of another hole left that's still not a full hole as yet. Right? So that is the mixed number. Now odd numbers, odd numbers start at 1. They go up by 2, so that means if we start at 1, the next odd number is 1 plus 2, which is 3. The next one is 3 plus 2, which is 5, and so on. They go up by 2. However, the odd numbers are not divisible by 2. That means if we divide an odd number by 2, we're always going to get a remainder of 1. If you divide an odd number by 2, you're always going to get a remainder of 1. Odd numbers typically will end with these numbers. So if you see a number, if it ends with 1, 3, 5, 7, or 9, it's an odd number. It doesn't matter how many digits the number has, how long the number is. Just look at the end, the last digit in the number. If it's a 1, a 3, a 5, a 7, or a 9, it's an odd number. And if you divide that number by 2, you will get a remainder of 1. Now the even numbers are the opposite. They also go up by 2. So they start at 2. The first even number is 2. They go up by 2. So 2, 4, 6. So it's like you're saying you're 2 times stable. Because even numbers are exactly divisible by 2. If you divide them by 2, you will not get a remainder. So it's, you're pretty much saying you're 2 times stable. Right? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. All those are even numbers. So if, the opposite, if a number is not even, it is odd. If it's not odd, it's even. It's one or, one or two. If the number ends with 2, 4, 6, 8, or a 0, the number is even. It doesn't matter how many digits there are. It doesn't matter how long the number is. Check the last digit. If it's a 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8, that number is definitely an even number. And if you divide it by 2, you will not get a remainder. So let's look at two other opposite numbers, prime numbers and composite numbers. They are also opposite. So what is a prime number? A prime number has only two factors. Only two factors. That means there are only two numbers that can go into a prime number without leaving a remainder. And those two numbers are the prime number itself and the number 1. So any number that only itself can go into itself and 1 can go into it, nothing else can go exactly into it, that number is prime. No, 1 is not a prime number. 1 is not a prime number. 1 has one factor, which is itself, 1. So the first prime number is 2. And as a matter of fact, this says 2 is the only even number that is prime. Can you think why that is the case? Why is it that 2 is the only even number that can be a prime number. Remember we said the prime number has only two factors, right? So if, if it's an even number, that automatically means two can go into it. And we know every number can go into itself and we know one can go into every number. One is the universal factor. One can go into every number. And each number can go into itself. So for the even numbers, they will have three or more factors. So the only even number that has two factors only is the number two. Right? Only number two. All other even numbers will have themselves one and two that can go into them, plus some might have more factors. 
So 2 is the first prime number and it is the only prime number that is even. All other prime numbers. So this is the first set of prime numbers. All these numbers here have only two numbers that can go into them. They themselves can go into themselves and number one can go into them. No other number can divide into them. So two, three, five, seven, eleven, thirteen, seventeen, and nineteen. These are all prime numbers. The opposite of prime numbers then would be composite numbers. The composite number has three or more numbers that can go into them. So we already know they can go into themselves. We know one can go into them. Right? And they, they might have other factors. Two, three maybe can go, five can go. So once it has three or more numbers that can divide exactly into it, it's a composite number. So the number, just like how the number is either even or odd, the number is either prime or composite. The composite number can be even, can be odd, but for the prime, they are all odd except for number 2. 2 is an even number. Alright, so let's look now at factors. What do we mean by factors? A factor is a number that can divide exactly into another number. So if we say 6 times 4 give 24, 6 can go into 24, 4 can go into 24. Because you multiply them to get 24. So 6 and 4 are factors of 24. When you multiply two numbers to get another number, the two smaller ones are factors of the bigger one. And the bigger one is called a multiple of the two small ones. So 10 times 2 give 20. 10 is a factor of 20. 2 is a factor of 20. 20 is a multiple of 10 and 2. A decimal, so decimals are fractions. It's really, they are just ways of expressing fractions, right? And just like how we can have a mixed fraction, a mixed number with a whole number part and the actual fraction part, same for the decimal, we can have a whole number part, but really and truly, the decimal part is the part that is to the right of the decimal point, the fraction, the, the part that's below one, less than one. That's the actual decimal part of it. And decimal, as the prefix indicates, it's a base 10 system. So the decimal places go pretty much like the, our regular base 10 um, system. So to the right of the decimal point, you have your tenth, hundredth, thousandth, and so on. And you can check the videos that we did on the place value system in the decimal. For decimals, there are videos on that as well. So 0 0.6, 3.5, 2.08, these are examples of decimal. Some of them have whole number parts to them. But the actual decimal part is the part to the right of the decimal points. Alright, so we have square numbers. What's a square number? So a square number is a number that you get when you multiply another number by itself. So if we say 5 times 5, 5 times 5 give 25, 25 is a square number because you get it by multiplying 5 by itself. 100 is a square number, that's 10 times 10. 49 is a square number, that's 7 times 7. So you should know your first, at least your first 12 to 15 square numbers, you should know. So what is the first square number? What's the first square number? What's the first number that you can get by multiplying another number by itself? That would be 1. The first square number is 1. 
because 1 times 1 give 1. The second square number is 4 because 2 times 2 gives 4. The third square number is 9, 3, 3 is 9, and so on. So we have 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, and so on. All these numbers are gotten by multiplying a digit by itself. You should know your first, at least the first 12 square numbers. You should be able to identify them. So this is how we write it. We write it with a small index at the top that indicates that you're multiplying this number by itself. So 3 squared, it doesn't mean 3 times 2, it means 3 times itself. You're multiplying 3 by itself twice. That's what this power means. So 3 squared gives 9. So the opposite of that would be the square root. The square, this is a symbol, square root. The square root of 9 gives 3. So this, this is asking you which number, when I multiply it by, by itself, I get 9, and that's 3. Finally, we look at powers, which are also called index, plural indices, or exponents. These are like the tiny 2 here, the little number at the, to the right top that tells you how many times you multiply this number, or if it was a variable like x or y, how many times you multiply it by itself. That's what the power does. The index, the exponent, that's what it tells us. How many times am I going to multiply this number by itself? It doesn't mean you multiply the number by the power. That's a common mistake that students make. The power tells you multiply this number by itself. All right? So if you have been helped by this video, please drop a comment to say thank you, miss. You know you must know your numbers. You can't be doing maths and not knowing your types of numbers. You must master these. And there are many other types, many other types of numbers. As you progress, you advance through your mathematics courses, you're going to be introduced to some really special numbers, like pi and e and those numbers, really special. They always recur in maths. And you're going to find out what they're all about. For now, try to master these ones and um, share the video so other students can learn about their numbers and master them as well. If you have not subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. And if you check the catalog and you don't see a particular topic that you really need to, to, to know about, you're struggling with that topic, just let me know in the comments which topic you want me to do a video on. I'll see you in the next video.